G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a lever action shotgun. This is a highly customizable standalone weapon that uses the lever action rifle animations. I've got a Hitman replacer for those, so if you're familiar with the weapon in game, you'll reload it from that side. Well, I reload the shells on this side, which is where they ought to go. Another thing notable about the animations before Bethesda got their shit together and fixed the animation and such in Fallout 76, this thing still reloads five, no matter how many you shot from it, no matter the capacity of it, which is kind Kind of weird but anyways let's get into the attachments and first of all for the receivers advanced receiver is the best damaging one so we'll chuck that on and for the barrels you get a sort off barrel long and short barrels and one with it's ported which is kind of cool i guess it reduces that recoil a little bit now you'll notice that these barrels sometimes have that rib thing on them i guess that's there just to keep the barrel nice and straight for a bit of uh, strength and rigidity so yeah and that's actually customizable too you'll notice if i chuck on the short one the the ribbing's a little bit too long, so there's actually ribbing to um, actually match which barrel you're on, and that's in a different attachment thing. But you, if you want to run around like this, with the shotgun like that, you can. Um, I don't think this will last long with the uh, constant muzzle flashes; it probably just break it. But uh, we'll go for a long barrel, I suppose. And the rib sights, you can chuck these on, and like I said before, it matches whatever you chuck on. So I'm guessing you could actually do that with the ported barrel right as well. For some reason, it does like to take off the um, rib sight sometimes. And there you go. You can actually have a tactical rail with a RDS on it. I'm pretty sure there's an EOTech holographic, which is nice. There's even more sights, so a very tactical-looking weapon. Very, very nice. And there's even scopes, which we'll get to the use of those a little bit later. But for starters, let's just go and chuck on a holographic with the long ribs on it to match the barrel. And for a uh, muzzle attachment, um, these all match the barrels too. If you chuck on the sword one, it just makes it look like there's like a tumor in the halfway of the barrel, so that's not good. But yeah, that's an option. Um, t for the interest in keeping this thing's range optimal, I won't do that. We've already got the ported barrel anyway, and I don't think that recoil is too bad. And we can control that even more with the recoil compensating stock. As you can tell, it's got the shells there as well. Very, very nice. And you can change the um, material of this thing. You can make it nice and tactical as a, I guess, polymer. Nice gunmetal grey colour. If you want to be a raider, role player, something like that, you can make it look like it's covered in blood and guts and gore and dirtiness. Or you could have it just a nice wooden stock and grip there, which I think looks the best, to be honest. But we'll be chucking on all of the different attachments with other weapons because I'll be... It's stupid just to run with one. So to, you know... Right, we'll just we'll get to that a, a little bit later if you want to see those things and you can have a folded stock which is kind of new and it does cause clipping with some attachments so for this one we won't chuck it on but it does make it look a bit, little bit like a spaz 12 you can put a barrel shroud on if you want it doesn't really do a lot but there's that it's it's a nice thing to have and you can change the ammo so you can have buckshot the 10 bearing which is uh, apparently wabbit season well i want these to kill people so if you could, I guess we've got the power to do it. You can also have Dragon's Breath, which boosts your damage even more, and probably adds some incendiary legendary effect onto it as well. And Deer Slugs for a little bit more sniping. I'll be using those with a scope. If they hit scan, this thing is going to be a lever action sniper rifle, as well as a shotgun. <laughs> a very versatile weapon indeed. We'll just leave that on for Buckshot now. And you can chuck a saddle on, because why not? It's literally what it says, so yeah, why not, eh? And a legendary effect is there if you need it. Honestly, probably don't need it, but yeah. Here is our standard little uh, lever action shotgun. I'll create a few more and I'll see you in a second. Okay, here we are in the human NPC shooting gallery. And this is what we look like in third person with it. I like how big the um, the reticule on the EOTech is. It's so big that it actually gets obscured if you dare to put the gun on an angle, which happens during firing as well. Nothing obstructs the middle dot, but yeah, there's that. So this is what it looks like in third person. And a couple of other things that I've made. Unfortunately for me, running this on a HDD makes these textures load in particularly slowly. So there's a little bit of a pause between switching weapons, which kind of sucks. Perhaps if I switch it just with the Pip-Boy, it'd be a bit quicker. But there's a bunch of variants that I've made. Let's start off with the one that I crafted first with the um, without the suppressor. And we'll just start off with a sneak attack critical on these guys just to see how we do. Aim high, get better damage one shot at that person straight into danger because we're firing a 12 gauge shotgun or a 10 gauge shotgun at them so obviously that's gonna um prick a few ears up i suppose unfortunately this gunner bought a ripper to a shotgun fight and um 
paid the price dearly. And there's the, uh, there's the reload animation. We're shoving in too many shells for this, and unfortunately they didn't come back in Fallout 4 and fix the reload animation for this, but they did it in 76, which I guess is okay. Of course, there's modders that are probably keen on fixing that, and probably have fixed that at this point, so yeah, there's that. But anyways, so one of the problems I have with shotguns, uh, mod shotguns in general, is a lot of them don't seem to out DPS the combat shotgun, which I find particularly problematic because there's no real reason to use a mod weapon if it's going to be inferior to that which is already in the vanilla game, other than style points. But I use weapons for, for performance, and I'm glad to say, even with the 50% uh, damage penalty that we do get on these guys, if we can kill them in one or two shots, I feel like we're doing pretty well, and if we aim high on them, we can actually do very well, so that's good. Stop dancing around that. Try to get my Twitch aim, because sometimes they just skip off into a random direction and start teleporting around. Yeah, sometimes human NPCs in this game are a little bit weird. Anyways, moving over to the Spaz 12 one. Unfortunately, the um, stock on it is kind of pointy at the front, so it doesn't really capture it. But it gets it for the most part. Of course, being a lever-action shotgun really doesn't make it a Spaz 12, but whatever. I've also got a compensator on this because it's got no stock, which means it should be a little bit better in VATS. You'll also notice how that person is on fire. Well, that is because I've got, um, I've got the Dragon's Breath rounds in this. And when we get a critical with the shotgun, that's when it goes well because... It makes all of the pellets hit, and how shotguns work in Fallout 4 and 76 is they get the base damage and they divide it upon all of the projectiles that hit, and I don't know how many projectiles, but I feel like it's a little bit more than the 7 or 8 that we see as standard also. I'll pick that up. Also, hello me, meet the real me, although the other me is dead right now, so whatever. Now, despite being on fire, these gunners... Uh, I mean, they must be well-trained, because they don't seem to be worried that they're currently burning alive. In fact, it's just a minor inconvenience to them, which I find particularly odd, but whatever. We'll keep on going. Very nice fire effects. I don't, I don't remember them being particularly good back when I played on console, but now we're just immolating everyone. It doesn't seem to affect the lighting around them, though, so that's probably a good thing in terms of frame rate. Alright, we'll switch over to our next one. This one has the slugs, and it also has a scope on it, and I was testing this before, it is hit scan. So basically, you can turn your shotgun into a sniper this way. Obviously, work a little bit better if you're not in danger, and thus able to get the sneak attack criticals, but if we can just slip back into caution, that would be good. Don't know what her problem was, but her leg was broken. Perhaps she stubbed her toe whilst coming around the corner, and she couldn't walk properly. Still in caution, no need to panic. See, like I said, it's basically a shotgun, which you can one-shot everything, which is basically the most efficient way you can run this. I mean, I know a shotgun is built for close range, but since you can extend the range out so far by chucking a suppressor and a um, slug rounds into it, well, I, in a way, it kind of obsoletes the shotgun because you can just stand back and shoot him and get better damage out of it. But yeah, it's an option. Very versatile weapon indeed. Okay, and with this knowledge that this thing makes a capable sniper, let's test this thing at range whilst also avoiding any rads. They're no good. Ain't no adrenal reaction in this game, so sitting next to those rad barrels um, has no benefit of, to me whatsoever. You know when your XCOM soldiers miss a 95% shot? That, that was basically me just then. Alright, you can die now, mate. There we go, a cheeky 1400 damage. Now, if we can one-shot the tankier Super Mutant Warlords with this thing, I'm going to be very, very impressed, but it might be rare. Also, there's a mine here, just ignore that. There's a bear. The bear's gonna do stuff. Oh, we actually get the sniper benefits out of it, too. That makes it even more ludicrously powerful, as that bear is thrown a couple of hundred meters because the dude threw a grenade just before it died. Now, question is, where is that mutant? He's he's camouflaged pretty well. I'll give him that. He gives the Viet Cong a run for his money, but um, unfortunately, Vats can see right through that, which is nice. And looks like we got a one-shot out of that guy. Um, I think we're just a tad out of range, so we got another half-damage penalty on that. So, 
yeah, we're hitting them for a lot less than we would on with lesser difficulties. And by the way, if you are using this thing on lesser difficulties, you'll have a much easier time than I am right now. You can probably just one-shot everything here. But we're, we're battle-hardened. We're big boys. We, we play this game on big boy, very hard difficulty. Um, survival actually gives you a damage boost. I think it's like 1.5 times damage multiplier, but incoming damage is up by 2. So, yeah. That's how it works. You take more damage in this and deal less. And it is the most laziest way of implementing difficulty, and they've been doing it for ages. You know that legendary difficulty in Skyrim? Basically, all that was was you do less damage, enemies do more damage, which um, basically makes everything super tanky, and it's not very fun or anything like that. Didn't particularly like playing that game mode myself. Mostly because I found a frost troll and that was like hitting a fucking brick wall and I couldn't get past him. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm, I'm doing something else. But frost trolls are annoying because they start regenerating health. They're kind of like the gulpers of um, Skyrim because the gulpers in 76 at least, they regenerate health at a astonishing rate. So yeah, good for them. They're like frost trolls. So, Alright, so we're sneaking around these super mutants pretty well and... Um, Whenever you're ready, game, there you go. I don't know what I could possibly do about that. Maybe I have to tweak the I and I settings, make it load in a little bit more at a time so it doesn't have to stop and start to load in some more stuff. Because I have this tuned. We'll see about that, Mr. Screaming Super Mutant Man. Alright, jigs up. Let's bring out our suppressed one. With Dragon's Breath, even. Just for a little bit better aim in the close quarters uh, combat we find ourselves in. But it's been a pretty good run so far. Um, despite the super mutants detecting us now, we're really not um, struggling in terms of damage output at all. And since these guys like to just stand there and take a bunch of bullets, or a bunch of shells, we can actually three-shot them if we give them a full mouthful of uh, shotgun pellets every time. That was a bad miss, dog. Unfortunately, the doggos in this game aren't um, the cool glowing textures that you see in 76. I I feel like that should be new, that that texture's new, because I've never seen it before in 4. Oh no, he's hitting me with a board. Now, back before Fallout 76, the boards really didn't do anything, so... You know, even with my 1400 or so health that I've got because this character's 10 endurance and level 127, I think, um, he's not doing shit. Anyways, so on to the main event now, Swan and, oh, no, Gerald and his boys have probably taken out all of the gunners that live around here now, so, um, we'll switch back over to the one that fires slugs. Anytime you're ready, game, there we go. And we'll get started on old mate Gerald, and we'll just hit him up in vats just as fast as we can, because we haven't used this thing in vats all that much yet. 1800 damage, we even got even more just now, so that's pretty good. We, we got that to 3600 somehow, which is very powerful indeed. And might as well keep using this thing in vats, because the last thing I want is uh, to get detected, so we'll find his head again. We'll use a little bit of gun fuel action just to take out all of the super mutants here, and just to get a little bit more damage on Swan. No, not Swan, it's Gerald. That's, a, that's the second time I've misnamed this fellow. He's mutated now, gives him... 10,000 health, I think, instantly, so that's, uh, yeah. You can see how little that does to his health bar when we're giving him that much of a regen when he's mutated, but he's going to one-shot me now, so let's not get hit by him at all. That would be bad, which is supremely easy if we just cheese him with vats all the time. Also, there's the reload animations in third person, so yay. You'll notice how the ammo is six when I only loaded five of the um, shots in there, so yeah. Just limitations of Bethesda's laziness, basically. Nothing can be... You can't really blame the modders for that. They're just using what they have. Go for a crit here. He is dead. And now what we all we need to do is find this guy. Let's play. Okay. I saw that T-pose there, Super Mutant. You can't pull the wool from my eyes. And you've only got a minigun, which they're kind of a joke in this game. Because look how little damage it's doing. We can just sit here and tank the shooting all day, but let's not do that, that's boring. And there you have it, that's a bunch of uh, things killed, mainly super mutants, 
at the um, the gauntlet here, and it did really, really well. Like I was theorizing before, this thing does make an incredibly powerful sniper, which for a shotgun is certainly interesting. Alright, let's push this to another level by buffing ourselves up with all of the chems under the sun. And now we're going to start killing the crab, just as soon as we find his face. There it is. So apparently this is actually good enough to take him out for good. And there's another sniper knocked down there. And I think he's warped into the... Uh, the camera's... Wait, what? I, I think he warped into another dimension. We, we might have to try that again. Okay, second time's a charm. Let's make sure we grab the sniper one out again. There it is. Find his face once more and see if we can't... I don't know where he went. We, we just sent him to another dimension. Oh, we weren't even sneaking that time. Okay. We've given him a bit of a head start, I suppose. There we go. There's another sniper knocked down. All we have to do is get ourselves back in the caution and we're laughing, basically. So let's just uh, go in this direction. Try to get away from him. Escape artist is trying to do its thing. We're losing him at distance. Almost back in the caution. Hopefully he'll crest this hill right as he comes back. We'll hide in the bushes to make it feel more immersive, right? And now he is traveling along. And we get some free shots at his face. Let's begin. And there we go. 2,500. And we'll go for criticals from now on because that's the only thing that can shoot through air. And oh, I guess he teleported again. Yep. Okay, this guy's got a real teleporting problem, apparently. Alright, we'll try this one more time, and we'll go for his face once more. Looks like we'd have him if we, you know, actually got all the shots on him, and hopefully he hasn't detected us off the bat. If he has, so be it, but... Ooh, ooh, he's trying to. He thinks he's got us. Not quite, though. Not quite. We'll keep on going for, with some more headshots, and we'll see how we go. Go for some sneak criticals... Ah, okay, we're in a position where only criticals can actually hit him because they're being blocked, and our reload just pulled us out of that, which is very annoying indeed. Alright, so we are basically being spotted by him constantly because it is during the day, but that's okay, I've got a trick up my sleeve. See, there it is. So if we get ourselves in back into caution now, it'd be good. There we go. No idea where we are. Let's just start hitting him now. He's mutated, we're getting 4,000 damage per shot. Almost got him. May as well finish him off with the old buckshot, I suppose. Okay, he has seen us now. He's getting real feisty. Uh, you know what? Might as well just finish this off with a little bit of... That's critical. Hopefully that can do it, right? Not quite. Well, if nothing else, we'll have Vat's protection protecting us against those monstrous claws of his. And that is him dead. Okay, he didn't teleport away this time, so there you go. So there you have it. That right there was a um, lever action shotgun. It's been a solid weapon. I, I actually have enjoyed using this thing. It's it's refreshing because normally I don't rate um, shotguns all that much in terms of their damage, especially if they're mod shotguns. But this thing has pulled through pretty well. So if you'd like to see this thing in your game, links in the description. Not sure if there's a console port. I'll have a look. If there is, link will also be in the description to that one as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys.